With the success of my vintage lens versus modern lens comparison, I thought I would try and do one against a 24 and a 28 millimeter. So first we have the Canon 24mm f2.8 STM, which is quite a bargain in the photography world. It's also called a pancake lens, that means it's small and lightweight so it's easy to carry around if you're traveling. Looking at the build quality of the 24mm, most of it is plastic, but it does have a metal mount which I do like. It's an EFS mount, that means that it cannot be used on larger full frame cameras. The autofocus on this lens is pretty good for the most part, but manual focus on this lens is not too great as it is focused by wire and it's not very repeatable. If you have the newer Canon cameras that can take advantage of the STM technology, you can focus while recording video, which would be a great feature. And on the vintage side of things, we have the Sears 28mm f2.8 and the Pentax K mount. Now the build quality on this lens is really good. All metal construction, nice long smooth focus ring, which is great for filmmakers. And it has a aperture ring, which is also great. Steps down from all the way from f2.8 to f22. You can even go and modify it if you want to declick your aperture, but I haven't done that and I don't really want to risk breaking my lens. I found the Sears 28mm lens along with a 50mm Sears lens and a 70 200 f4, all of which with a old film camera for $25. Let's take a look at the image quality from the Canon 24mm. At f2.8, the image quality is superb. It's definitely sharp, but on the corners there's a little bit of softness as with any lens. But as you stop down, those corners clear up. This doesn't really bother me too much. I actually like how the edges blur and makes you focus on the center. When you stop down all the way to 5.6 or f8, you're going to see the best image quality before it gets to blur from diffraction. And the Sears 28mm f2.8, whoa, what happened there? It looks a little blurry to me. Well, no, this is precisely focused, but at f2.8, the image quality is not good wide open. Maybe it would look good for portraits, but not typically good for every situation. You'd have to stop down to f5.6 at least to get some sort of sharpness from it. And at all the other apertures, it remains sharp. To see the difference from the Canon and the Sears at f2.8, we zoomed in and you can just see it is very blurry. There's no sharpness in the image at f2.8. However, if you're going for an artistic look, this may work. Of course, we knew that the vintage lens was not going to stack against the Canon 24mm brand new lens. However, there's a few things I liked about the Sears lens, primarily the build quality. The smooth focus ring is easy to adjust and make sure you nail your focus, unlike on the Canon which it's harder to control. I'm sure that other vintage 28mm lenses would be a lot better than my Sears lens. I believe the Sears line is a knockoff brand, so the image quality is not as great as you get something from a real Pentax lens or a Canon FD lens. So next time you see a vintage lens, you might just want to pick one up. You never know what you're going to find. And hey, maybe even the results are sharper than the modern alternatives. If you like this video, you can watch my comparison between 50mm lenses and also my favorite vintage lens of all, the Yashica Yashinon 50mm f1.7.